fix GM by using eggs and soda. What is wrong with you? We almost drown while driving. It's cold, it's cold. And we welcome skateboard legend Tony Hawk to our track. Woo, that one felt good. Welcome to Top Gear. On this show, nobody will be made an ex-top model. Nobody will fall off a big red rubber ball. But if you like cars, this is where you belong. I'm Adam Ferrara, that's Tanner Faust, and this is Rutledge Wood. We start tonight with General Motors. A few years ago, the U.S. government bought about 60% of GM to help save the company for $50 billion. That's $50 billion paid to the U.S. government by you and me. That works out to $163 per person. And for 163 bucks, we all get a part of GM. A very small part. It's point zero 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 two percent to be exact. So the idea is that if we can find one top selling car for GM, we would all win. So we each picked a great GM car from the past. We put it through a series of tests to see which one would best protect our investment. <laughs> We decided to meet in Detroit, Michigan, Motor City, the automotive center of the world. Adam was the first to arrive. I have chosen the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, one of the most popular nameplates in automotive history. This car was introduced in 1961 and sold 11.9 million until it ended its production life in 1999. This car was made when GM owned the American roads, and it was because of cars like this. Look at it. It's friggin' beautiful. This particular model has the V8, the classic Oldsmobile Rocket 350. And you can tell by its lines it was designed during the pinnacle of the muscle car era. They also knew how to combine muscle car stylings with a reasonably upscale interior. In fact, this was one of the last attractive GM interiors before everything became plasticky and cheap. I always liked the roof line on the Cutlass Supreme. It was a more formal notchback rather than a fastback. The other things I love about cars of this era is the high beams are on the floor. So when you're driving, you can just tell people to get out of my way. Tanner's a Coke dealer, a Pontiac Fiero. This thing could save GM. It's like a hero car. It's like an exotic car for every man. It's a chick's car. It's the only mass-produced mid-engine car ever in America. Which they stopped after four years. It's designed after a Ferrari 308. It's gold! <laughs> Fiero in Italian means proud. Absolutely. You brought back a fad, okay? This is basically parachute pants. I had 26 zippers on one pair of pants. You know what? That doesn't surprise me at all. You found the biggest car in a 50-mile radius and bought it again. Yes! What is up with that? That's great! It's a man's car! It's an old man's car. No, 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 my friend. This is the 71 Cutlass Supreme. That's an executive hot rod. What do you think Rutledge is gonna get? I have no idea. Oh, my God. Mom's here! You're kidding. Fellas, allow me to introduce the Buick Roadmaster Estate Wagon. Tell me the inside doesn't smell like Virginia Slim cigarettes. Look, it holds eight people with the seats down. You can fit a four by eight sheet of plywood and it'll tow 5,000 pounds. It's got the Vista roof. Yeah, how about that? This could be the most usable car GM ever produced, but the fact that it's got that much power makes it really fun. I mean, it's a total boat. You cruise in style and with this luxury, of the vinyl fake wood paneling, it lets everybody know I'm classy. You know what? I have never seen you and Clark Griswold in the same place at the same time, now that I think about it. Let me guess. You brought the Fiero. Absolutely brought the Fiero. Of course you brought the Fiero. I mean, look at it. It just screams, I love the 80s. Don't be jealous. Is Banana Rama still together? And this, wow. Where's the mast and the sail? You're kidding. You're really gonna, with this? Yeah, you got nothing to talk about on that one, Rutledge. This thing's sleek. The turning radius on this is Pennsylvania. That could fit in the back if I laid my seats down. This is a mid-engine masterpiece. And you know what the best part about this mid-engine is? What's that? It bursts into flame. Can you do oh. a brake stand in this thing? You bet I Let's can. Let's see it. Done. <laughs> this is a Buick, all right? Wow. Look at that. 
it. While the smoke cleared, it was obvious we were never going to agree which our production car was the best. <laughs> but fortunately, the producers had come up with a series of challenges to help us decide. America loves a road trip. So to prove that your vehicle has the stamina for the long haul, you'll need to drive them 100 miles to Marshall, Michigan. Are you kidding me? Road trip and the Roadmaster. You're going to be surfing that waterbed. I'll be there waiting for you, fellas. Have fun in the Incredible Hulk. It's a test color. We were representatives of the American people. And if our hard-earned dollars were going to a car company, we were going to make sure that car was the best. The cars deserved a second chance. Who knows what variables were at play when these cars were in production that might be different today. The car may have failed because they didn't have the proper technology to make them competitive. They could have had a bad marketing campaign, or the design could have been too ahead of its time. Freaking light doesn't work. Come on. We were on a road trip, and it was the perfect time to get to know our cars a little better. the cops right there if there's any car that attracts attention in this group for the police it's the fiero because this thing looks fast just standing still in the 80s fiero actually took down the almighty mustangs and camaros at sears point consecutively the balance of the mid-engine is undeniable ferrari has found success in it and their whole brand is based on racing 140 horsepower though i mean mid 80s that wasn't bad 2500 pound car it's pretty quick you can put your foot in it. That's not bad. The Fiero is really about a great concept and a poor follow through. In large part, it was due to a recall where they actually had to fix every single Fiero ever made. Ooh, what's that? A little power, there we go. Under the hood, you've got a detuned LT1, so it's basically a Corvette motor with a little bit different heads. These are geared so you can really get this car up and going because it weighs almost 4,500 pounds. You need a little torque to get you around. Maybe things that aren't so great about it. Well, it is a little floaty. The suspension could be a bit tighter and the seats don't really hold you. You like my car? Roadmaster, it's a station wagon. You probably didn't even notice. I love you. Look at that. Pretty girls talking to me in the wagon. Psst. This thing. How you doing? You like my ride? Thank you. If we were to bring this car back, would you buy it? Thank you so much, darling. She likes my ride. Cutlass Supreme was retired in 1997, three years before Oldsmobile went out of business, but it really didn't matter. By that time, the design evolved into this emasculated front-wheel drive shell of itself. Not like this sweet ride I'm in now. This is a luxury muscle car. It's got everything in it. AM, FM stereo. That doesn't work. Air conditioning. That needs to be fixed. But it's got the Rocket 350. It handles a little boat-like. Not like Rutland, just Staten Island Ferry. This really is one of the best road trip cars you could have. When this was new, this is a car you would pack the family into and head across the country to Wally World. Sorry, folks. Park's closed. Even though we were in separate cars, I felt like we were one big family taking a road trip. Man, this thing is comfy. It's like a lazy boy with a steering wheel in front of it. Adam was already complaining. Hot! And Tanner was enjoying his toy. I'm impressed for a 24-year-old car. Runs nice. Not on fire or anything. If you brought back this car, you could not only save GM, but you could also make some cool cars. You make the wagon, off that you build the Caprice, a hot rod Impala SS, and then cut off the back of the wagon. What do you got? Dun 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 dun. Your new El Camino. GM is saved. Thank you, Rutledge Wood. Wow. So if I was going to upgrade this car, I'd light it up a little bit. 
maybe a fiberglass hood or carbon fiber, depending on my cost. I turbocharge, direct inject the Rocket 350, and I fix the friggin' air conditioning. Hot! Tanner, are you gonna put another tiny hard to work on V6 back there? Negatory, my friend, LS7. Are you gonna change that in your redesign? The redesign's gonna be epic. Believe me, it's gonna start with a race car and it's gonna trickle the technology into the road. It's gonna establish GM as a world racing power and change the brand altogether. The majority of y'all's target market was conceived in the back of a Roadmaster wagon. I know that much. Granted, you got that one. 75 miles into our journey across Michigan, our family dynamic began to break down. Papa Bear was getting annoyed because the Cubs were wandering. Tanner, you might want to just slow down just a hair. Hi, Dad. I'm going the speed limit. Slow down! Don't make me separate you two. You guys can't keep up? This will help. If you'll slow down, get in the right-hand lane, and the three of us get together, then no one will sound like an Too late. <laughs> it's like eight-year-olds with licenses. That's what a road trip is like with these two. Our cars successfully completed their first challenge, the 100-mile road trip to Marshall. But soon, we realized that the producers didn't just send us to any town. Marshall was home to Eaton Proving Grounds, a place where our three cars would enter, but only one would leave. Coming up, the Fiero fights back in the battle to save GM. Why are you gonna hit my car? You can't drive like this without the very best in automotive engineering. Top Gear is brought to you in part by Mercedes-Benz, engineering some of the most legendary cars on the planet. Some people just know how to build things well. Give you and your loved ones an expertly engineered Mercedes-Benz. <laughs> at the winter event going on now. And stay connected with three years of Embrace service complimentary. We were flattered when Regenerous beat a $100 cream. Flabbergasted when we creamed a $500 cream. For under... Th the 100-mile round trip in our out-of-production GM cars ended at Eaton Proving Grounds an automotive torture chamber. This proving grounds was like Marine Corps training for cars. It had a bank test track designed to wear down every moving part. An intimidating hill that seemed to stretch straight into the sky. And a skid pad so slick you could ice skate on it. Each section was designed specifically to expose a car's greatest weakness. This was not going to be a walk in the park, but it would help us decide which car was best to bring back from the dead. Our first challenge at Eaton was a classic zero to 60, and the Roadmaster was ready for it. What are you gonna do in the power wagon there? I'm going nine. Days? You guys wanna make jokes or wanna watch me haul ass? Go! Nice long, I like it. 40, 50, 60. Shade over nine seconds. That's a pretty fast grocery getter. I used most of a tank right there. Rutledge got the Titanic moving quicker than I thought, but it was still going to be no match for my Rocket 350. Shift! Shift! Thank you! 60. The smoky burnout. I got 12 and a half. Tanner was next with a measly 140 horsepower, but the Fiero only weighs 2,700 pounds. Tanner only weighs 80 pounds, so he definitely had a power to weight advantage. You ready, Breakfast Club? Yeah, I'm ready. There's 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. I don't know how that looked from the outside, but damn, that was so fast inside here. Tanner's Fiero had beaten the Roadmaster by a full two seconds. 
It was time to go on to the next challenge. You may have noticed a Top Gear production vehicle parked on a 20% grade incline. It's being held by its parking brake. This is your next challenge. Drive up the incline, put your vehicle in neutral, apply the parking brake, go pick up the bowling ball, put it in your car, and drive over the hill. You know what? I'll go first. Great. Roadmaster should. It's just you and me. Got nothing to worry about. I'm just gonna pull up this hill, and then I'm gonna put you in neutral. And then I'm gonna put the parking brake on, okay? Look, he's gotta get psyched up to go do it. And I need you to brake so I can get that bowling ball. Come on, Roadmaster. Here we go. Nice and easy up the hill. And there's the bowling ball. And is it gonna hold? I heard it. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I would get out of it. That door's gonna close and lock on it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. He did it. Adam and the Jolly Green Giant were next. It sounds like it's there. It's not there. This is dangerous. Uh-oh. Is that his phone that he just fell off? Chicklets. Oh, damn it. It was a good try. The hill was too steep, and the e-brake was too tired. <sighs> damn it. And I needed a new phone. Next, it was Tanner's turn. I didn't know it at the time, but one of the many Fiora recalls was for the e-brake. The transportation safety bulletin on it basically said I was screwed. Dude, yeah, dude no, why are you gonna hit my car? Oh! What is wrong with you? That car hates you, Adam. I think I think he beat you. I have a little buckle. That'll buff out. Oh, oh. He's got to do that, too. What, you have to bring the ball leave here. it parked a bit? Thank you. Oh. It's plastic. It doesn't dent. I'm yeah, I know. I didn't know that. Rutledge was getting so confident that he decided to peacock a bit and attack the 60% hill climb. Oh, I got this. Oh. <laughs> go! Go! <laughs> I almost had it! <laughs> Next, the producers came up with a challenge that would test our car's handling capabilities in extreme conditions. The professionals at Eaton have set up a course on their low traction skid pad. You'll need to navigate your way through the cones. That doesn't sound so hard. Nah. Cool. You'll be given 10 32 ounce cups of soda that all have to be within reach. The car with the fastest time and the least amount of spillage wins. Oh, I forgot, it's a manual. That's gonna be tough. There would be a five-second penalty for every soda that spilled. And the best news of all, Tanner had no cup holders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here we go. Three, two, one, go! Oh, 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 oh. It's all gone! Oh, <laughs> Did you see how much just went there? There we go. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, my oh, God! God. They're all gone. So I gotta save at least one of them. <laughs> oh, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold on the ball. Mother of all that is sacred. Oh. <laughs> is that one cup left? <laughs> that was a bad idea. There were two cups. <laughs> Rutledge was next. All right, Rutledge. Ready? Rutledge's lazy boy on wheels was practically built out of cup holders. Now remember, it's a combination of speed, time, and spillage. So the time is critical. You ready? Go! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, that's so cold! Hold on with me, right? Wow, he's going pretty quick, actually. Oh, I just let it stop. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh. Come on, Relich. 
and stop. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at all these. Look at how much I saved. Not yeah. bad, Rutledge. That's pretty good. Oh my gosh. Do you have five full cups left? That means I was wearing five cups. I didn't feel so bad because Adam was next. And his car didn't have any cup holders. Three, two, one, go! Oh! Oh! Oh, that's cold! I think my left one was just frightened into my body. <laughs> Always fun. Oh, don't. That is gonna be wet. Oh, he's coming into the box. He's finally getting there. Oh, come on! And stop. Adam saved four cups. Then the producers made us do our own math to figure out the winner. Okay, so I got a 109. Yeah, you had a 109 and a half, yeah. 109 with a four cup penalty, which is 20 seconds, so I got 129. So I had a 51, so I had about a seven minute run, pretty much. Really? I had a 55 second run, and I lost five cups, so that would mean a minute 20. That means I won! This is awesome! This is awesome! What's next? Bring it on! The Roadmaster's ready! Woo! There's more GM to come. But it is now time for the news. Gentlemen, did you know Google has invented a car that drives itself? It uses video cameras, it has radar sensors and laser range finders to, quote, see other traffic. Tonight, we are testing three old GM cars to see which classic design that we, the American taxpayers and GM shareholders, want to lobby the company to bring back. So far, we've driven to the Eaton Proving Grounds. We've tested zero to 60, e-brake performance, handling, and, of course, interior storage. Yeah, and for our next test, we were told to line up in front of a section of uneven concrete known as the rumble strips, where we'd be given our next challenge. All right, fellas. Most cars that are tested on the rumble strip drive at 20 miles per hour. You are going to drive at 30 miles per hour. A colander of eggs has been attached to your driver's side headliner. The person with the most eggs left in the colander wins. Really? You want to start it off? Yeah. Uh-oh. Wow. Not your head needs to go inside the car. I know, I know. I'm going to put my belt on. Yeah, that'd be a good move, maybe. OK. Wow. All right, good luck with that. We'll be right over here trying to stay dry. OK. This isn't going to be good. Awesome! All right, Adam, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go! Go, 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 go! Oh. Oh. There we go. We're almost home. Yeah. That seems so violent. Yeah. That was worse than I thought the trunk was going to blow off. It doesn't look that bad. Oh, yeah! <laughs> How would you describe that? Uh... Yoki, my cholesterol actually went up. Who's next? <laughs> Tanner's up. You ready? I'm ready. Go! There you go. Oh, no! The Fiero's double wishbone suspension was communicating every bit of the rumble strip to the steering wheel, as well as the collar. That was... <laughs> He has got some egg on him now. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Rutledge was next. Your head makes that colander look so small. <laughs> you ready, Rutledge? Time to make an omelet. Go! Go! Oh, they're moving. I can hear them moving around in there. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> He's all over the place. Wow, this is rough. This really does feel like I'm in Detroit. Oh, 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 no. That was awesome. I hope he broke all the eggs. I don't have any on me. This is amazing. The, oh. Come on. What? 
Dry as a bone? No, you got a little shock absorber in there. Nothing. It's not my phone, it's the Roadmaster. I say we check the eggs. Sure, let's check the eggs. I have seven unbroken eggs. Uh, Are those hard boiled? No. Well, they're not hard boiled. Can you hit the middle of his uh, window? Yep. Let's see, I think I can hit it from back here. No, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna throw. Oh, not in the, not in the road, master! In the end, we had more eggs on our cars than left in our colanders. The SS Roadmaster was victorious. What's wrong with you? Up to this point, each of our cars had put up a good fight, and there was just one challenge left to determine which car GM should bring back. We asked the producers if we could change our sticky, egg-stained clothes, and they were happy to help us out. You look good. Does this suit make me look fat? Really? They're supposed to be slimming. Once two-thirds of us were nice and comfortable in our new outfits, we received the final challenge. This challenge is to test your car's build quality. To do this, your cars will be filled to the top with water, and then you will drive around the track. When the water level drops below the steering wheel, you will stop. The person that drives the furthest is the winner, which would make the wetsuits make How sense. How are you going to drive underwater? Oh, well, it's here, there's a snorkel and a mask. You'll be fine. You kind of have a little advantage here since this turd bucket only holds like 30 gallons of water, I would guess. So I've got to shift gears underwater. Yes. You're hosed. Your car's going to hold a swimming pool inside it. You know how much that's going to weigh? I'm telling you right now, though, I'm warm. If you get uh, cold in there, they say you're supposed to pee in it. <laughs> you know what helps me? I do a couple deep knee bends. Get it right where you need it. A couple twists here. Oh. All right, put your belt on. No way. <laughs> I'm not putting my belt on. <laughs> then our water source arrived. Oh, it's a fire engine water? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be warm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that is a big hose. All right. You ready? Coming up, there can only be one winner in the Wet n' Wild GM Challenge. Dear Lord, I don't want to die in a Buick. Tonight on American Pickers. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is a big hose. All right, you ready? The car that can drive the farthest before the water level drops below the steering wheel wins. Yeah, the wipers are going to help with all that egg and soda. Your mats are floating. The Fiero was filled with an aroma of gasoline, rotten eggs, and Dracar Noir. And if that wasn't enough, my car wouldn't start under its own power. The car died. So I asked the guys if they would help me out. Oh, good guy. How much is that? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, we're trying to beat him. You're right. Bummer! Oh. It wasn't looking good for the Fiero to make it back into production. Now it was my turn. And without any of those pesky modern electronics, my Cutlass should do just fine. Holy crap! It's already coming out. He's looking for a gear. Dude, look at the car! <laughs> it looks a lot better. Wow, it looks great like that. It's American built quality right here. All right, Adam. Go, 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 go! go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, baby! How's that possible? Oh, look at That's it. That's how we do it. <laughs> still going. He's still going. Look at that. Right up on the incline. There you go. That's it, baby. Wow. It is out of sight. Even though the cutlass was leaking badly and weighed a ton, 
its 350 rocket propelled the Hulkster around the track. It smells kind of bad, but it runs really good. No, 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 no. Don't pass the Fiero. Go, go. No. No. He's going to lap the He is right on the steering wheel, though. That is the end. Uh, he's pulling over. He's done. He's Look, done. Tanner. Whoa. Oh, Mother wow. of pearl. That is like a river. How fast she go? It's tough to tell that the speedometer was underwater. I think you're up, my friend. Zip up and dive in. It's all you, Big Daddy. Did you pee? I peed. I'm downstream from you, my friend. Well, I didn't pee now. I peed when I was in it. Can you breathe? Yeah. How about now? No! OK. <laughs> you're good. Hold my glasses. Can you see anything without your glasses, Rutledge? I cannot. The fireman told me Tanis Fierro had taken on 500 gallons, my Cutlass, 1,200, and they estimated the Buick would hold 2,500 gallons. That's a staggering 20,000 pounds, plus a bowling ball, and Rutledge's head. That is a lot of water! Look at the back tire. Oh, my gosh. Get back in there! That is awful! Get in there! Get in there! Dear Lord, I don't want to die in a Buick. Have the door handle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the back seats are. The Roadmaster's electronics were going haywire. As the water level continued to rise, the wagon made a cry for help. Okay, go, go, go! I can't see anything! <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> That's 25,000 pounds. Driven by a blind man. Come on, baby! We should just look for smoke. Yeah. My Buick was performing beautifully. If my family truckster could make it past Adam's Cutlass, it would be going back into production. The Buick was victorious. I grabbed my trophy and headed for Winter Circle. <laughs> okay, there's your trophy. Very well done. Good oh, gosh. That is how a Buick Roadmaster gets it done. Well, as much as I hate to admit it, you are indeed the Roadmaster. Well, boys, there's just one last thing left to do. Taking this baby back to Detroit. So hold that. Shotgun. Oh, ooh, that means you're riding, bitch. We're there. Oh! It's gonna be a long ride to Detroit. Uh, there's some sort of electrical noise coming from down here. Don't worry about that, it's just by your feet. These are apple cookies you eat on the way. I got hungry. Yeah. Dear GM, throughout the history of your company, you have committed yourself to building great cars for the American people. But we think it's time you do more than build a car for us. We think you should build a car with us. This car should have enough space to fit any kind of family and give you the freedom to go anywhere or do anything you wanted to do and have the durability to tread through any hardship, just like America. Thank you. Signed, your shareholders. fellas. Um, what did you guys think of this? You think this would help us bring GM back? Yeah? I mean, it's a pretty amazing test that we put these through. And it still runs. I mean, we drove it in here. But I think the message is clear. This is the car that if we remade it, could save GM. 
Would you guys like to see our version of the new Roadmaster? Yeah. I would like to see that. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Ah. Look Ooh. at this beautiful sleek wagon. Now, it's not your grandpa's Buick. It's totally updated, but I think when you see it from the side, you'll see what we're talking about. That, my friends, is a stylish wagon. We still, of course, have the applique vinyl wood grain sticker because you don't want to lose the classic nostalgia of the first one. But there's no wire wheels on this one. It's got big 20s on it. We've got the original Buick portals are coming back. Obviously, Vista Roof is going to run the entire length of the car rather than just on the back. So it's all glass, so when it's really hot, the children will burst into flames. Well, also, you can't see it on here, but there is a hole for a snorkel, uh, which brings me to the interior. It is entirely waterproof. The seat covers are also egg resistant, should some jerk throw eggs in your car. Now, it will continue to have the rear-facing seats. It will hold eight people, and you'll notice, what's that? Hey, wait a second. That's a six-speed. Oh, yes. I mean, the best of all things GM put into one car. This car could save GM and people would buy. I agree. What do you guys think? Yeah. I'd drive it. I would drive that every day. I'm sure you would. You'd be the coolest grandfather ever. Oh. Yes, you would. Well, that's all we've got this week. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. What if I...